So I thought, <clears throat> so I thought we'd go on a tour of my currently inked pens, um, and I have a lot of them, but I'm only gonna, I'm only going to show you the ones that I currently have inked. So I keep most of them here in this big case. I don't carry them all. <clears throat> I have a few that I carry every day. Um, most of the pens will be in here. So this is a zipper case. And it's not really like one of those pen cases where you can separate out all the pens. Um, so I have like four slots. Four mm -hmm. slots. This is, um, this is my grandmother's pen. Uh, a bunch of Chinese pens. I have a pilot. Uh, more Chinese pens up here. And then these are um, the more knockabout ones, so a bunch of Chinese pens again, and then um, uh, platinum preppies. I uh, have a squeezy thing for eyedrop ring ink, and this holds like a few nibs, that a few spare nibs. Um, let's see. My... the stuff that I do carry out every carry around every day um, is this and this. So this is a just a fabric pouch uh, canvas and it contains two knockabout Chinese pens again. Um, piston fillers. They're pretty. One's in um, this is a uh, this is Apache Sunset here, and this is um, the green, the Ackerman, um bright green. I forget what it's called. <clears throat> and my very, very favoriteest, most favorite, um, is in this. So this is a leather pen sleeve. Um, wasn't very expensive actually. Got this, <clears throat> got this locally. Uh, about maybe call it 150 pesos, so that's about three ish dollars, a little bit more. Um, this is also a Chinese pen, it's another piston filler. It's fairly full. Um, I just refilled this. Uh, this currently has uh, this is a Wing Sung 698. In the extra fine with the uh, chrome accents, <laughs> fingerprints, <clears throat> and it's currently um, filled with Lamy turquoise. So I write with this the most. Um, Gizalami turquoise is really good on even horrible paper. And the extra fine, um, again, doesn't lay down a lot of ink, so you don't have so much bleeding. The Apache Sunset is a really good highlighting color. So if you want to make notes, um, draw arrows, underline, whatever. The... Apache Sunset is a very nice kind of counterpoint to the blue. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then, of course, the green, bright green, is another really good um, color for notes or yeah, underlining. But what I love about this green is it's also really, really well behaved, even on really bad paper. So I can write, um, I can write on newsprint with this. It's it doesn't bleed quite as much as some of my other inks, and it's a nice bright green.
So it's a nice bright green. Um, it shades really, really nicely. But it's dark enough so that even if you were to write like huge chunks of text with it, you could still read it really, really well. Uh, so these are my everyday carries. And then sometimes I'll mix it up. I'll throw in, um, just for the added color, I will throw in one of the preppies. This is a uh, platinum preppy pink <laughs> in uh, with a 0.3 nib. So this would be the fine. Uh, just has a cartridge in here. But this isn't the original cartridge that came with the preppy. Uh, I've actually refilled the cartridge with uh, noodlers and Australian roses. And this just rounds out the color palette. I guess. So a uh, nice bright uh, pink, burgundy-ish pink to round out the color palette and again make notes a little bit more colorful. So yeah, these three. And then, um, no, four. One, two, three, four. I've forgotten how to count. Um, and then most of the time, yeah, I will usually carry this. And um, this is uh, probably the most expensive pen I have. Uh, it's a Parker 51. <clears throat> it's vintage. It belonged to my grandmother. Uh, she's had it for a while, I think, since... I don't know, based on like how it's built, what the insides look like. It looks like it was manufactured in the uh, 60s, 70s, <clears throat> something like that. No, 50s or 60s. So it's about as old as my mom. <laughs> and it's been in storage for probably longer than I've been alive. Uh, yeah, and it was, it was a real mess. It was, you know, nobody used it. Uh, it had ink in it, uh, dried, dried out ink inside. Um, I tried to open it up to clean it out. I couldn't quite get it done because, you know, it's just a little too scary for me handling such an expensive pen. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, I never managed to open this up, but I did manage to clean it out. And it has a little squeeze converter that came with it. <clears throat> and yeah, I filled this with ink and now it works so I guess it's a testament to the workmanship of the Parker 51. It currently has a purple ink in here it yet it takes me a while to adjust to like the right the correct writing angle but once you've gotten the angle right it writes a really nice juicy broad line it's really good for signatures um, and my purple is semi-permanent so yeah good for signatures uh, this I don't keep in the pen sleeve it's uh, I don't know People will hate me for it, but I keep it in my shirt. I keep it clipped to my um, neckline on my shirt because A, I don't have an extra pen sleeve, and B, I like to know exactly where it is all the time because I'm afraid of losing it. Uh, so yeah, that is what I usually carry. The rest of these I will rotate in and out depending on my mood. <laughs> so a couple of like, I have a lot of transparent pens. Um, let's see. Ah, this is a, one of my favorites as well. I really like the Metropolitan. I actually prefer the way the Metropolitan handles um, as opposed to the Preppies. But yeah, it's currently inked with a brown. Um, which I don't find quite as exciting, maybe. 
No, I like the brown. It's just that... Um, right now I need a lot of note-taking stuff. I need to make a lot of notations, so I prefer to bring like the brighter colored ones. Um, when I do sit down at my desk for a block of writing, I might pick out one of these. So, yeah, that's what I currently have. Uh, I don't think we'll go through the rest of this because there's like just too much. But maybe one day. <laughs>